sat down to design the combat system for Origins, I think we were trying to modernize a classic. Baldur's Gate 2 has always been a reference point for us as the game that really let you feel like you were mixing uh, classes, abilities, combinations, smart planning, and on-the-moment thinking. So we decided to modernize that. Realistic combat fighting styles, like actually, you know, the weight of the sword, the, the presence of a maul smashing into a body, all of these things are really key for us. And I think what we resulted in is something you just have to think of as like sword porn. It's for the enthusiasts. <laughs> In terms of looking at source material, I think uh, you, you have to look at classics. You know, The Lord of the Rings, uh, 300, and certainly you know, even some of the older stuff. Go back to the, the really best fight scenes you'd find in the Conan movies, even. This is a brutal time to be in, and we wanted to evoke that feeling. What we wanted to achieve was the sense that you could be both the, the general lieutenant, that kind of commander role, as well as the guy just leading the charge. So we've, we've put together several systems, including a tactic system that lets you fully control the AI of your characters, uh, and of course, just smart reactions to the way the enemies occur. So you kind of have that moment where you plan, you see the enemy, you're thinking like, how do I enact this grand strategy to make these characters do as much friggin' damage as I can? And then once you charge in there, the battle's just a swirling melee. You've got positioning, moving your rogues around behind so they're just jamming their swords into kidneys. You have your warriors just holding that line and your mages kind of holding the back line, just raining death upon your foes. So it's very in your face once you're engaged, but you always have that little moment just before where you go, oh, I know what's coming and here's my plan. <laughs> Often what you want to do is deal with the strategic impact of the equipment and the talents that you've chosen. So you want to try and mix your characters for maximum effectiveness. All characters have a, a sense of whether they're being flanked or whether the character's directly behind them. Uh, there's direct bonuses to everyone who's making attacks from those kind of harder to defend arcs. Uh, even the sense of you know what weapon, what side are you using uh, can affect things like sweeping attacks when you're, when you're swinging double weapons. Uh, you can certainly use barricades, walls, things like that to block incoming enemy fire so you can actually make advantage carefully undercover and then things like elevation really do play into the mechanics as well even what you wear affects the tactics you're going to employ in Dragon Age Origins uh, the heaviest armors in the game are going to protect you but at the same time they're going to slow you down you're going to be fatigued just by wearing them so you won't be able to pull off as many special moves <laughs> Finishing moves are the way that we've managed to basically imply that the combat has a momentum. Uh, finishing move is a, this awesome visceral moment where it's, you know, sword through the chest, boom, off comes his head. You know, smashing a guy with a maul so he goes spinning through the air and lands in front of you. Or possibly killing a, a really large creature by actually climbing on top of it and jamming your blade in. We had some stunt actors from the movie 300 like doing some cool, cool swings, cool death flow moves. And it's not just about flash. As you wear your opponents down, the game is dynamically adjusting the incidents of these happening. We are essentially rewarding your combat dominance. As your opponents are worn down, their morale starting to break, and you are just crushing them on the battlefield, you'll notice that your characters are finishing them with far more frequency. More heads come off, more jets are pierced. It's pretty fantastic. Designing combat isn't just about, you know, rules and a couple of animations. It's about the entire experience, as far as I'm concerned. When a player comes out of a combat, what I really want is that sense of tension and then that release of, man, look at look at what I just pulled off, that sense of orchestrating something. I don't want to make a game that just softballs and you're like, oh, yeah, I killed that guy again. No, I want, I want you to feel challenged and like you were rewarded for playing smart. For me, one of the most exciting parts, I think, will be the war stories, you know, the forum posts, the water coolers. People even in, on the team are already discussing ways they dealt with Boss X, and that's pretty cool and very, very, very rewarding because it feels like the game was one that they played and it was for them. Dragon Age is a big game, and while that's a great value for the consumer, it's a giant pain in the ass. There was a lot of long nights, there was a lot of hard crunch, but uh, I mean, when you're working on something that you love, you don't really mind so much. Working with this, our team was awesome. I mean, everybody put in 110%. It was big. At our peak, we were around 150 people, but we really came together as a team. And it doesn't really matter anymore if you're a programmer or you're an artist. It just matters that you want to make the best thing possible. Yeah, I think one of the greatest challenges was, was understanding that our audience has grown up. Uh, the industry as a whole is, is older, uh, it's not this thing that relegated to kids anymore. And understanding that what we almost had was a mandate to make sure that the game had uh, punch. In some ways we felt like we were 
out to to prove ourselves as not only a team but as a company again. And um, I don't know, that was something that was very exciting. Dragon Age is a, is a funny game in some respects because um, it's something that you're not going to understand the the, the, the breadth of it and, and the, the scope of the world until you sit down and you actually find yourself in the middle of it and, and then you'll be like, wow, there's so much here. Dragon Age is a universe that has a story that spans thousands of years. Dragon Age Origins takes place over maybe a year, maybe two years at most, depending on how exactly you're playing it. So as you can imagine, there is hundreds and hundreds of additional stories to tell in this same space. And I think you're gonna see a lot more coming from us soon.